if you have not heard, Google this week launched its quantum chip, demonstrating that quantum computing is possible. Now you might go, you might have heard the word quantum computing thrown out there before. Maybe you know you're techie enough to kind of know what's going on with this, but this is not only a massive, massive breakthrough in the tech sphere, this is a massive breakthrough and has physicists, sociologists, <laughs> theologists. I mean, this has people everywhere who are paying attention to this going, what just happened? And now if you're, I'm going to talk about two primary things. So the first one, first I have to explain to you the implications of what this is. And I'm, I'll be objective about it. I'm not going to go, oh my gosh, this is everything. Cause I want to see more based on where this goes, but I'll share with you what this is. So basically a quantum computer defies physics in that it actually performs calculations in ways that we can't really quite explain. And I'll get to some of that in this, but basically we're talking exponential power beyond anything any computer has ever seen. And to prove it, they did an experiment where they did a computation that would have taken the world's most powerful supercomputer. Okay. Think of the <laughs> supercomputer, I don't know, somewhere in some government substation that nobody knows about type of a thing, the most powerful computer on the planet. And if they were to have it do this computation, it would have taken 10 to the, it would have taken 10 septillion years. <laughs> okay. 10 septillion years to give you an idea of what this is. If you want to write the number out, it's 10 with 18 zeros after it. I've watched a video on this that was talking about the fact it is longer than even the, you know, scientists have even believed the earth or solar system or anything has even existed. This thing did this computation and you know how long it took it? Five minutes. So <laughs> this is why it has physicists and philosophers going, how is that humanly possible because for it to do what it did, it would have had to have bent time and space. All right. Now I'll get into some of this because this, but can you see why I'm a little bit energetic about why is this not headline news everywhere? I, every night I go through things with my kids and kind of look at the top stories of what's going on so that we can talk about them and just stay up to date with what's happening in the world. And Google's quantum processor was nowhere on the list. It was only on a couple fringe tech blogs and things like that. It's now making its way to Yahoo Finance and things like that. But this is a massive breakthrough. It's like when the guy made the fusion reactor out of $2,000 in an Anthropic subscription that sat on his desktop. And you go, where is that in the headlines? But there's two big things that have come out of this quantum computing. Now I understand there's some set skepticism, okay? Because you would just think, well, isn't everybody just having their mind blown with this? Not necessarily. There's going to be your skeptics and the skeptics are pointing out, well, here's the deal though. Google created something that's measured on a standard that they also created. So isn't it possible that their benchmarks could be manipulated to show that they're processing? I, I get that. And I think, sure, maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's not 10 septillion years that it, what it was, but 10 quadrillion years. or You know what I mean? Like we might be talking a slight rounding error in this, but bottom line is this processor blows the socks off of <laughs> anything we've ever done in the history of anything. Now, two of the big things that are big discussion points. One is, what does this mean for cryptocurrency and crypto, the whole crypto technology? Because if you don't know enough about crypto, crypto essentially is saying it's a secure transaction because it's so complicated. No computer in the world is powerful enough in its lifetime to ever break down the pathways and the encryption of what's happening in the crypto sphere. 
And some are going, well, now, good grief, if we step into the quantum computer space and it can do more calculations than are even possible with the most powerful computers in the existence of everything, won't it just nuke the socks off cryptocurrency and, or not just cryptocurrency, but crypto, won't it just be able to crack crypto like nothing, like a kid opening a, I don't, I have no idea. I don't have an analogy in mind, but you get what I mean. Won't this just completely destroy everything, which you think about the implications on cybersecurity. Isn't everything unsecure now? Because if we get into the quantum computing sphere, won't you just be able to crack everything? And what's interesting about this is, well, yes, hypothetically, this is going to change things. Now, I think there's a couple reactions to people who may be freaking out if like, <laughs> so basically your password's useless now because quantum computers can hack everything in a fraction of a second. Not quite. And I do think it is going to challenge where we go. Now, granted, keep in mind the Willow chip, it's the Willow quantum chip is just coming out. But this is a big advancement in this. And it also is going to, if you followed me for long, you know that I've said in the AI space, we've kind of been hitting these ceilings where processing power has its limitations. It can only do so many calculations and there's only so much capacity and only so much processing power. Willow's quantum computing opens, just took the ceiling off where we are. So where I wasn't sure if we were going to see a log marith logarithmic scale on the curve, or if we were just going to continue seeing exponential growth. I think this one indicates that as we move into 2026 and beyond, we're probably going to, we've probably got a long way to go before we hit the ceiling of our, what we're doing now, how quickly this will advance and all this stuff. I don't know, but does it bring up security and go, well, what does this mean? Because now we have unlimited processing power. And what does that mean for cybersecurity? And things like crypto. And what does it mean for AI? We don't know yet, but for people who may be, <laughs> who may be calling the like bunker companies going, can you build me an off grid thing in a place in West Virginia? My kids and I watched a documentary on where there's zero anything. There's no, you don't need to go that far because we've got some time, but also I was listening to somebody who specializes in quantum computing and crypto, and they were talking about the fact that it's like, it's not quite that simple. Just because we've unlocked processing power doesn't necessarily mean it breaks everything. Because just like you buy a Ferrari doesn't mean you're going to get your groceries faster. Because while you might get to the grocery store slightly faster, that's not all there is to buying groceries. And so getting to the grocery store there and back, yeah, it might take things a little quicker, but it's not just going to blow groceries and suddenly groceries are going to end up in your fridge because you thought about it. And that's, I think, some of the like, well, these things take longer. But does it mean, well, there's going to be some things we need to think about here? And does this mean big implications on cybersecurity processing where AI goes? Yeah, I absolutely think so. And the fact that we've now cracked quantum, or at least hypothetically here, and based on what Google did on Monday, uh, this is this is significant. And I'm going to be following this because it's going to be interesting to see how quickly this gets adopted because there's a lot of demand for what Google just did. Now, the other really interesting thing, because I told you philosophers, theologists, <laughs> skepticists, like are going, wait, what just happened? And the reason for this is when you start digging into how on earth did it break physics, there are some people that are starting to go, this advancement proves there's more to our reality than the sphere that we experience right now. Now, again, depending on where you sit, for me and my worldview, any of you who have followed me for long know where my worldview sits. For me, I go, yeah, <laughs> this, this does not break my mind. To me, this makes perfect sense that, okay, there is something 
bigger and outside time and space as we know it. So does it surprise me that we would be able to create something that can tap into that? I think for a lot of people, this is breaking that reality that, wait a minute, this there's something bigger than what we experience right now, because the only way that right now they're even able to remotely explain this, and I saw a visual of how this works, but what they're saying is, it's doing its computing by tapping into the multiverse and actually performing all these things across all multiverses all at once and then coming back and finishing it. So it's almost stepping out of time and space, jumping to every multiverse, then returning and ta-da, it did it. Now, like I said, I have a very particular worldview on how this fits in and do I think that time is something that we don't fully understand and it's something that was created for us that there are things outside of time? Yes, I firmly do. And I kind of chuckled when I saw this as everybody was running around going, oh my gosh, our physics and mathematics can't explain this. And I'm like, yeah, because there's things that our physics and science and mathematics can't explain. Duh. And Google just proved it, which is one of, to me, the greatest ironies <laughs> of, of, of my lifetime that like, wow, what do you know? We proved with the computer processor that there's something bigger than us. But I'm sure there's going to be a ton of effort that goes into, well, how do we figure this out? And what happened? And where did where did the processor go to suddenly magically do something that would have otherwise taken more time than has existed. And we can't explain that. Um, so I think this is going to challenge a lot of people right now as we start stepping into the quantum sphere and we start going, I guess we have to rethink things. And yes, there's a reality that we operate in, but there's a reality we also don't fully understand. And that's how we're able to start doing some of this stuff. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see some of the speculations and you know, what people think and how people make sense of it and where it goes. And I'm sure there's going to be no shortage of conspiracies and no shortage of things. I guess the encouragement that I would put out there for people is my perspective is there's a space in which this makes perfect sense and it doesn't rock your worldview and doesn't shatter your reality and doesn't make you go, I, I don't know what to do with this. What is even the point of life or where does life go? If maybe everything I thought, maybe we are just an internet machine plugged into a giant simulator. It's like, no, that's not, that's not it. But I, I get a lot of people and that's where I actually have empathy because there are a lot of people. I actually talked with somebody this week who this quantum computing thing shattered their world. It just completely shattered their world. And I understand why. And so I'm sensitive to that. Um, but this, this is a big breakthrough. And the fact it's not mainstream, I, I don't know why. Um, so we'll see what happens with it. We'll see what happens with it. But it's going to make for an interesting 2025, to say the 